Now let's take a look at the um, specimen on the slide which is of small intestine and before we get to that specimen on the slide I want to show you a quick cartoon diagram of the way the epithelium in the small intestine is organized. Looking at the diagram here on the uh, left hand side the wall of the small intestine is thrown into a very large number of uh, upward projecting finger-like projections or folds and these folds are called villi. The core of each villus is made up of some loose connective tissue. Uh, it won't look as it does in the cartoon diagram and that loose connective tissue contains blood vessels, lymphatics and lots of cells. The important feature for the purposes of understanding the epithelium is that the surface of each of these folds is covered by a simple columnar epithelium as we see on the right here. So here's a finger-like fold or villus extending out into the lumen of the intestine and the surface of that villus or fold is covered by a simple columnar uh, epithelium. And here we are back at our NYU VM multi-tissue uh, slide. We began by looking at the trachea. This section here is the section which is the section of small intestine and even at uh, very very low magnification it should probably be apparent to you that there are these finger-like extensions or villi which are jutting out from the remainder of the wall of the intestine. This is a longitudinal uh, section, a strip of gut if you like, taken uh, out of the wall and it's just been folded up here uh, for convenience to fit it on the slide. Now we're going to zoom in and I think we'll probably look at this region of the specimen here. Um, it so we're going to look in this region around here and the first thing that you might notice as you look is that these finger-like extensions are, are rather close together so we can see that quite clearly. The second thing that you may notice as a distinction from prior uh, hematoxin and eosin slides you've looked at are the presence of lots of very dense red staining structures here and we'll look at these in a bit more detail uh, in a moment. Now we've zoomed in again. Uh, here's one villus which we're looking at here. Here's the core of the villus. This is made up of loose connective tissue. It's very, very cellular. It's not really possible to see much of the fibers that make up the connective tissue, nor indeed to see the blood vessels which are in the core of the villus. And here we can see lining the surface of the villus, uh, standing like soldiers on parade, are the uh, simple columnar cells which is characteristic of all of the epithelium throughout the small intestine. As we increase in magnification again, and here we go. Again, it should be very evident to you that here's uh, one villus and here's another villus and it should be evident to you that the villus is lined by a simple columnar epithelium. We can see the cells here. Here's one cell here. Uh, the basement membrane is where you see this little thin red line here, so it's stained here. And so these cells are taller than they are broad, making them columnar. And it's simple because you can see all of the nuclei all line up in a single row and you could probably guess that these are attached to the basement membrane. There are actually two distinct types of cells make up this uh, epithelium. The plain simple columnar cells which form the bulk and then these cells which have this intense red staining associated with them and these cells are called goblet cells and their role is to secrete mucus. They're called goblet cells because they're approximately the shape of a wine goblet and you see that rather well with this one here for example or uh, this one here. One other thing that's worth noting here is that there are some modifications to the surfaces of the simple columnar cells that line the small intestine. Now, these modifications are finger-like projections of the apical surface of the cell and they're called microvilli. They don't really bear a relationship to villus other than that they're both finger-shaped. These microvilli are non-motile um, in comparison to cilia, which are uh, motile. And although we can't see the individual microvilli, there are probably three to 500 uh, per cell, they appear as this structure which we see here, which is stained with this red color. And it gives a kind of a brush-like appearance to the tops of the cells. And this, for this reason, the appearance is referred to as a brush border. So the formal classification of this epithelium is a simple columnar epithelium with goblet cells and a brush border. And finally, once again, along here is where the basement membrane is. This red uh, staining here probably represents at least part of the basement membrane. And in the background, in the core of the villus, we can see here, you can see some thin uh, pink thread-like material. That's collagen that is, forms the fibrous component of the connective tissue. And then everything else we see here are cells embedded in the connective tissue. Some of these cells are fibroblasts which make the loose connective tissue, but many of the cells found in the core of a villus are in fact immune system cells which are migrating to and from the epithelial surface. 
Finally, on the uh, multi-tissue slide which we looked at uh, using the search for uh, trachea and we've looked at small intestine, now we're going to look at the last section we're interested in here and this is just a brief look at this particular section which is a piece of uh, tongue. The epithelial surface of the tongue, we can see at low mag, is this uh, surface here and the surface uh, here is a cut surface and this is the uh, underside of the tongue here. In fact, this may, is also going to be a cut surface uh, across most of its uh, length. Now we'll go up in magnification slightly and we'll move here. Here's the epithelial uh, surface of the tongue. And again, we're going to zoom in a little bit. Uh, rather than me tell you what the epithelium is uh, here, what I would like you to do is to examine the epithelium across its length that you can see here and then decide if you can classify this epithelium based on what you've learned about epithelium so far. Underneath the uh, epithelium, so in this region here, again the basement membrane doesn't stain but we can see where the final internal layer of the epithelium is. Beneath the epithelium uh, is a thin layer of this pink material here and again this is uh, connective tissue and because it's found directly beneath the epithelium this is most likely loose connective tissue. Now why do I say that it's loose? Um, what you have to do is picture in your head the dense irregular connective tissue of the dermis and then internally make a comparison between it and this material here. Here we don't see big collagen bundles, rather we see these uh, pink interwoven collagen uh, fibers. And also this material as you can see is quite cellular and we can see that based on the nuclei of cells which we see. Again many of these cells will be fibroblasts but some of these cells will be other forms of connective tissue cells which are migrating to and from the area just beneath the um, epithelium which you can see here. One other reason to look at the tongue slide is that there are actually quite a large number of blood vessels uh, present on this slide and we're going to zoom in just to look at a couple. Now the purpose here is not to teach you about the appearance of blood vessels, although it helps if you pick up something of that, but rather to look at one of the epithelial types that you're responsible to know, uh, but a special type of epithelium called endothelium and this is the simple squamous layer of cells that line blood vessels. There's a small venule here and a small venule here. The uh, purpley mauve material in the middle here is actually red blood cells which were trapped in the vessel at the time that the tissue was prepared and these little venules are essentially made up just of a layer of endothelial cells with maybe a little connective tissue outside it. Here's an endothelial cell nucleus, here's an endothelial cell nucleus, here's an endothelial cell nucleus and just along here is the very delicate little layer of connective tissue that surrounds them. Here's an endothelial cell nucleus, here's an endothelial cell nucleus, here's an endothelial cell nucleus. And this is the appearance of simple squamous endothelium that's found lining blood vessels. Elsewhere, if we move further in toward the core of the uh, tongue slide, we can see some other uh, blood vessels in here, and I'll show these to you now, just very quickly. If I zoom in a little. So here in this image what we have are some venules and uh, an arteriole. Uh, this is a venule here, this is filled with uh, little red blood cells and this is an arteriole uh, here. Now again in this practical you're not expected to learn the difference between arterioles and venules. We're just going to look at them to see if we can see the simple squamous endothelium which lines them. Here's the arteriole. The endothelium lines the lumen. This is filled at the moment with red blood cells. Uh, outside of the endothelium there's a layer of a special kind of muscle and these are quite elastic -y in their uh, consistency and when the tissue is preserved they often uh, squeeze down and become a little contracted and as a consequence the nuclei of the squamous endothelial cells bulge into the lumen of the vessel. So although we can't see endothelial cell cytoplasm we can see the nuclei of squamous endothelial cells that form the lining of this blood vessel and this is an arteriole. As I move across to where the venule is, here's the venule. Venules at this size don't have any real muscle associated with their wall. Again, the lumen is filled with red blood cells, which are stained to kind of a purpley color. Here's a squamous endothelial cell, squamous endothelial cell, squamous endothelial cell, squamous endothelial cell. And again, as I decrease in magnification, you can see blood vessel, blood vessel, blood vessel, blood vessel. And this is a good place to look, again, if you want to see squamous endothelial cells that line blood vessels.